Hooray for the holidays, huh? Yeah. Wow, is that just exciting? I don't think I've ever heard trombones and trumpets like that. With such young people who play so well. Made me feel right at home. <laughs> so, holiday harmony. Who ever thought of that one? Certainly not of our culture. We are so programmed to be dysfunctional at this time of the year and to be so out of tune with the rhythms of this cycle. That's it. That's all you get. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really. Honestly, as, as a kid growing up, I, of course, look forward to seeing Santa Claus. Yeah. It was a big deal for me growing up. I can remember when I lived in Puerto Rico that someone came to me and said, another kid, probably a year or two older, said, did you know there was no Santa Claus? I was crushed. <laughs> I was. I went to my father, who was so other than, Santa Claus, and I said, what's, what's going on? So apparently, I don't know, he went to my mother and my mother, they, they got their heads together. And then later on that night, he came up to me and said, Clark, come out here quick. Of course, in Puerto Rico, the days are a little longer, so on and so forth. He said, did you see it? I said, see what? He said, I just saw Santa Claus on his sleigh. Save the day. <laughs> Save the day. I was able to go to bed that night feeling all is well with the world. <laughs> and here I am, 72, saying, what happened? <laughs> Our culture has gone to an extreme. As a matter of fact, I would say our world has gone to an extreme to where harmony hardly is even mentioned. And I'm saying to you, consider now, first and foremost, you are a spiritual being clothed in a body of Earth. You live on a planet that has its cycles. It goes around our star. And that one time cycle is called a year. In that year, it offers us a variety of experiences that we call seasons. And it's on a daily basis. It's on a, it's on a moment by moment basis. But the energies change. They fluctuate from wherever the sun is and wherever the earth is in their relationship. Where we are right now, we're getting to, to the place where we have the longest night of the year. The longest period of dark. And what are we doing right now? Rushing around like a bunch of idiots. Shopping, going into debt, trying to please others that we can give a damn about otherwise. It's just absolutely astounding how much we have become out of balance with ourselves and with each other. I'm not suggesting that you don't give me anything for Christmas. <laughs> What you would have given to them, give to me. I'll be glad to do that. <laughs> but what I am suggesting is that you allow yourself some time during this. We have a week here to where the effect of the equinox can be felt if you tune into it. By the way, this tuning into, I'm really speaking about a magic that exists in discernment. If you open yourself up, you can tune into the actual energy, the rhythm of the cycles, and gain from it. If you will allow yourself to tune into this cycle, this period, just before there then begins the growing of light and the dissipating of dark. You can do yourself a tremendous favor 
Because what you can do is you can tune into, and as the Celts did, recognize that this was a time where you could let go of things that were holding you back. You could tune into this as the natives throughout the world have done and recognize much is to be gained by uniting with the natural forces and feeling that naturalness inside of you come alive to remind you of who you are, to remind you of your connections to life, to where there is a deeper appreciation that is not, that doesn't require the necessity of giving someone else a tinsel-wrapped box to show your affection or your genuine liking of them. That you go to a place of first and foremost reestablishing that sense of loving yourself. Loving yourself and then allowing that love to become a living force within you that you then choose to ride the vibrations and live with others, all others. You then will find yourself being able to move away from the distractions that are so prevalent right now. You'll be able to tune into other energies that are kind of like background energies instead of the, the blare and the glare of what's trying to distract you. And you can become more connected to a deeper realization that even if it doesn't seem that way, things are working together for good. And while we may be going through this Almost seems like a reversal. Remember back when we were, well, some of you, you weren't born yet. <laughs> back when we were in the 50s, I was, just, I was just a kid myself, but I remember all the hoopla. Uh, my God, what happens if the Russians attack us and we're going to get nuked and all of this and everybody was withdrawing their energies and everybody was in a fearful, protective mode. And then from there we went into the 60s and what happened? I came to San Francisco, that's what I <laughs> There was such a free, there was such a, a liberation. There was an energy of saying, hey, we're humanity. Let's live love. Let's live it together. Let's be real. And now we've digressed. And we've become more selfishly inclined. And to hell with everybody else. And especially if they don't look like us. My God. Aaron, I'm not so sure about you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm getting there. <laughs> but you look at it and you see the, the ignorance that is driving itself to a place of being recognized for what it is. So that we can, as we choose to be in harmony with the rhythms of life, make wise decisions. Instead of being just mindless and incapable of owning our sense of self, we wake up and we make basis like heartfelt connections as a reason why we are together and why we choose to be together. Now this is, this is really a simple message today. It's talking about harmony that exists deep within us that is awaiting our recognition. So, if you have attachments to different forms of reconnecting, please, activate them, use them. If you want to go into the woods and connect that way with nature, you want to build a fire and connect with the flames of the fire to where you feel the dross being burned away that then frees your heart to where your heart is able to rejoice in who you are and what you're doing. Whatever it is and however it is, allow your connections to be of you, from you, and real. So that what happens is, when we get together, however it is, we're able to be more balanced and more at ease. Instead of being on guard and feeling like we have, to, we have to be the right person because we haven't been together for a year or whatever it is. Be you. 
I'm really encouraging you to go to the place to where you can find the real you and then try it out on living it right here, right now. And in so doing, you might just discover a harmony that's been awaiting your recognition. That because of the time of the year it is, you'll be giving it a chance to come alive. Thank you very much for your attention. For more information about the Metaphysical Church of Enlightenment or the Rodin Foundation, please go to our website at www.rodin.org. If you have been inspired by the revelations shared in these podcasts, please donate to the Rodin Foundation's ongoing efforts to help others help themselves at www.rodin.org.